Good morning, good morning, friends and family, children and grandchildren. Um, I am today decided that I'm going to do two projects. One is I'm going to make my own chainsaw pants. Eric and I both have chainsaw uh, hats and shields, but we and we have our own chainsaws, although the one I have, the, the gas one I had died. It was an old Poulin and it had it for years, probably 15 or 20 years, did a lot of work with it. But for some reason, after we cleared the forest around the house, I don't know if I worked it to death or what, it died, died. Or else the squirrels got in and chewed the gas. I don't know, it doesn't work. So anyways, the, um, the uh, necessity for me to have my own chaps, I think they're called, chainsaw chaps, I don't know, is probably pretty important because we always, we can't work at the same time. And so I had uh, my friend Roslyn sent my husband home with a pile of uh, blue jeans that uh, didn't fit her, and they're wide on the waist, which makes them great. I have very short legs, so there's lots of leg material here. So I noticed when I was mending Eric's well-worn chainsaw chaps that they're basically uh, three layers of fabric. Um, they have a quilting film in the middle, or fiber in the middle, and then it's two thicker layers outside, which are orange, right? Uh, well, actually, the outside's orange, the inside's not. So anyways, they're expensive to buy. And I have lots of Velcro and lots of denim and lots of quilting material. So the, the big project I'm going to work on today, after I do my little project, which is an impulse project. If you know me, you know I have a lot of energy. And when I get these impulses, uh, they're usually really constructive. Um, I, I have to flow with it because if I don't, it's a list hanging over my head of I want to do thing. And it's a rainy day today, cloudy and rainy, and Eric's still working on getting soil to fill some of the raised beds so that I can plant before we get a heavy rain, which would be great for the garden. So I came downstairs, and if you look over here, I don't know if you can see it or not, um, we have recycled cupboards from our daughter Jennifer. She redid her kitchen, and Eric, um fitted them for my canning kitchen because I spent a lot of hours uh, and months down here in the summer and the winter sewing and laundry, but in the summer canning and processing food. So the, the equipment in these cupboards is kind of messy stuff. It's little bits and pieces of funnels and canning stuff and whatever. And on that side of the basement, it's uh, the spices and little jars of dried stuff and so forth. And so it's it can look pretty messy. And I'm not anal about being clean. I'm not a perfectionist, but I like to know where things are. I do not like ripping apart cupboards and drawers and bags to find stuff. I like having it all where I can find it. And um, so, which requires some organization. And when we bought this place off the estate, this was a, a root cellar, really. It was dark, damp, uh, seldom used for more than laundry. Uh, Mom and Grandma had installed shelving on the outside walls. It was just the the uh, concrete walls right to the to the uh, six foot ish ceiling, and um, it has a gutter running around it, which has water pumping out with a pump that seldom worked in the basement flooded, so there was a lot of mustiness down here. So Eric, God bless that man, I tell you, he went out and dug a um, sloped trench because uh, we're on a hill here, and uh, if you've noticed our property, it, it gradually slopes down towards the lake. So it was fairly easy as far as um, the natural flow of gravity. He dug a trench, and he had it gradually sloping down to the ditch along the highway so that when we get heavy rains, if it seeps in through our windows, which are now pretty much below ground level, because when Dad did the big shock, he raised the ground on the hillside. And so all the water runs down the hill, down into our yard, and often in a heavy rain, through the windows um, at the base, even though we've sealed them and spray foam in them, still water seems to run in on heavy rainy days, which is only about three or four times a year. So it uh, created a problem for me because I like to work down here. And I had put uh, linoleum on the floor uh, that my son-in-law, Chris, gave me, and those um, styrofoam, not styrofoam, rubber mats you use in your shop, and water would get under them and I'd have to do a major clean. So Eric put this gravity flow thing in, so if the water comes in, it goes in the gutter and right out of the house, so we don't have that problem. But 
I do have a problem with looking at the clutter in my cupboard. So I have a lot of quilting fabric. This is a piece I bought from the quilting club in Gorbet, Happy Quilters. They auction off unused fabric uh, occasionally to help raise money for the group. And I've got this three meters for only $5. And it's not uh, a color I would normally wear. And I'd hoped to add it to a quilt, but I never did. And it kind of is the colors of the flooring in here and the countertop. And it's flowers. And I love flowers. So, being the person I am, they say necessity is the mother of invention. So I have, I will show you, just give me a second. We took old carpeting off the stairway that had been there for years. Uh, it was like that indoor-outdoor stuff. And it was so full of dust and dirt and grime that we, I couldn't really get it clean enough for me. So we took it off and I sanded down the old steps and varnished them. But they had these rods and they are brass. They're really pretty. They're probably as old as the house, maybe 100 years old, possibly, maybe not. But anyways, um, and the little loops, right? So I am going to install the little brass bars above the top cupboards. Bottom ones are great. They have doors. And then I'm going to make these curtains to put on the brass for two reasons. One, vanity. It hides the clutter in my cupboard. But the second thing is we heat with wood. There's a wood stove down here. And every time my husband, I'd say every time my husband, opens the stove bottom to pull the drawer up and get the set out or cleans it out. He stirs it up every morning, the ashes. Uh, we have a circulating fan that circulates the air through the house, draws the heat up and down and so forth. Um, it fills the basement with dust. I'm always, always dusting. Not only the basement, the whole house. So it's ash. It's black ash dust. So when I want to use any of the dishes out of here, I have to rewash them all the time. So... Uh, until we get to the point in our life where we've done all the major jobs and we have nothing better to do with our time and make new cupboards, which may be years, um, I will have curtains that will go across these cupboards and prevent all that ash dust from going in on all my cookware and spices and whatever. So I've measured them already. I need 26 inches in order to make hems and, and for top and bottom. And now I'm just ironing it out and then I'm going to assemble these. And you won't want to necessarily watch all of that. And I have not discovered a way to pause a video so that I can make it one big long video. I have to add several videos. And so when I upload them, you get to see the beginning. And then you have to watch a video too and see the end. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed and sew these. And then I will hang them. And then I will show you what Mother Invention, Mother of Invention, it's interesting. It's mother of invention, not father of invention. Uh, our necessity uh, has caused me to create today. God bless. See you in a bit. Okay, I've got the pieces all pressed out. And I'm going to turn off this little, it's a shark steam camera. It's a use it for quilting. Sadly though, um, it didn't last very long, like six or seven years, and it stopped steaming, even though I used distilled water. Uh, we have a well and it's hard water, and uh, I don't know what has gone wrong in it. You're supposed to squeeze the handle and it steams. The size is wonderful, it's portable, but it's not steaming. So it doesn't iron things as well as I would like it to. So now I have the fabric all pressed and all the seams marked. So now I'm going to get myself around this ironing board, which turn the iron off. And I have a cutting table. Uh, quilters have a cutting table. And it's, if you're a quilter, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're not, it's uh, one of those uh, pieces of uh, construction. I don't know what to call it. Anyways, that uh, self-healing, they call it. And I have a rotary cutter, which is also a very handy tool for a and I have rulers. Um, I'm not equipment poor, that's for sure. When it comes to canning, cooking, sewing, or whatever, for art supplies, I have a wonderful, wonderful collection of art materials. So when that spirit of creativity 
takes me into art. Uh, I have been in a very remote area, and not as remote as some people on YouTube. But anyways, I, I live in a fairly remote area. So shopping uh, for anything like quilting supplies, I think I'm actually going to cut that a little deeper so that I get all the pieces that are measured again. Uh, if I cut a little deeper, I won't have to unfold it and try to find the traces. I can just uh, take off a fraction, a quarter of an inch. Yeah, that's 25. And uh, the distance I want to cover is only 22. So with the two hands, and I don't have to be very big, I should be good. So let's just cut off. Or should I take a chance? Maybe I won't take a chance. I won't be happy if I cut it too short. There's my seam. There's my pin I marked it with. So anyways, uh, I have to travel three hours three and a half hours to Sudbury to get supplies for things like quilting, canning, large groceries, items. Costco is in there. We do have a Costco membership. Don't use it very often, maybe twice a year. But nevertheless, it's there in Sudbury. I have a three hour drive. We used it a bit more when Eric was going, a bit more, not much more, a bit more when Eric was going to Kimo because I was trapped in Sudbury. Our friends had driven us. Our friends had driven us to Sudbury because it was the middle of a snowstorm. And the doctors at the hospital said to Eric, you have to get up here. We have to start this treatment. I think it was January. And uh, first one cut. And then um, uh, this blizzard was so, so bad that year uh, that I, not a good winter driver. It's not my thing. And so we have some wonderful friends, Rick and Ann Bradley, who volunteer all the time everywhere. I don't know how the, this island would do, this West Island would do without their love. And uh, they volunteered to drive us because the doctor said if you don't get to Sudbury, someone else will take your bed. The cancer center in Sudbury is uh, always full. It's hard to get a bed there to start treatment. In fact, they tried to get Eric there three times and couldn't get him in because of the snowstorm. It was a terrible winter. And uh, so anyways, he got canceled twice because someone else got his bed. He was on intravenous. He was in the Mindamoy Hospital. And he was getting worse. He was in a lot of pain. They couldn't figure out what the obstruction was. And they couldn't budget. They almost dynamited it up with laxatives and enemas. And nothing worked. Nothing worked. So it, he was in miserable. And Eric's not a You know, I've got to give that guy credit. He's like an angel from heaven. He has such a cheery attitude, even in a middle of pain. He would not uh, complain or gripe about anybody or anything, or the doctors or the hospital. He's not that person. He's not a blame everybody for my problems kind of person. Um, so anyways, he uh, was suffering silently almost. But no, not Eric. He's social. The days that he... He felt a little better. He would walk around visiting the terminally ill people who were also waiting for beds in Sudbury or whatever and try to cheer them up, bring them a drink, whatever. Uh, people who couldn't sleep in the night for pain and the night staff might not be where they can hear them. He would go into their room and see if they needed staff help and he would go find a nurse or whatever with his, his little intravenous thing on his arm. He would go and help them get the attention they needed. So anyways, um, they finally had one more bed, but they said we, it was like noon when we discovered there was a bed free. Sadly, someone had passed away, so their bed was empty. And uh, they, if Eric could get there by four in the afternoon, uh, he would have a bed and they could start addressing his physical problems with treatment. So we uh, had a big storm, and so my neighbors picked me up. And they, they drove me to the hospital in Minimalia, and uh, we gathered him up, you know, all bundled up best we could. My friend's a nurse, so that's why they let us go, because they knew we had somebody with us who would know how to deal with the crisis. And they drove us to Sudbury. So I had to stay with him a week. I, we didn't even, I didn't even know that I would have to stay with him a week. I thought, we'll see the doctor. They'll do the CT scan and send us home. Well, they didn't. 
um, they did the CT scan and said this is pretty serious. So we got a, we didn't know it was stage four cancer at the time. We thought it was just a bowel obstruction. So anyways, they said we got to start this treatment right away. Well, that was a Friday, so we had to wait till Monday to get everything set up. He started his first part of the chemo on Sunday in his bed in a room with three other patients who had a similar illness. And in the time we were there, approximately a week, um, they died. Eric was the only one still alive. And uh, other people had already come in the room. So anyways, um, I don't get much work done. I tell my stories. I'm a storyteller as well as a creative person. So anyways, um, that's when our, our beloved dog, Gabe, died. He was uh, t being taken care of by a neighbor. And what they obviously didn't know about Australian Shepherds. And we didn't arrange it. Our friends arranged it. Um, I wish someone who loved dogs would have took them, but I can't change that. Um, they are cat lovers, and so they came over uh, once or twice a day to make sure he had food, water, whatever, go to the bathroom. But it, the nature of that dog is they need to be with their master. He knew Eric was sick. He knew I was away, and uh, he was like my shadow dog. And um, for us to be gone that little period of time, and it doesn't look like he was eating. His dish still had the food in it I put in it when I left, so he was perhaps refusing to eat. End of story is he passed away, and we came home to the grieving week of grieving and crying about the loss of our dog, which was a blessing in a way, <laughs> sad, sad blessing in a way, because we couldn't talk about what Eric was going through. Both of us were afraid to, to talk about the elephant in the room. I crocheted squares and sat by his side, and he tried to make chit-chat and slept off and on between treatments. Uh, I bought him a... Um, tablet so that when at night came if he couldn't sleep and I couldn't sleep I was in a motel uh, we could um, messenger one another and talk and uh, occasionally I'd just crawl in bed with him and lay beside him uh, in the afternoon just to be near him and, and love on him because I'm human I worried for the worst and I wanted to suck every precious moment I had with that man uh, up and uh, so anyways uh, I don't even know why I'm telling this story but it's got to do with Costco these things just kind of evolve, okay? I did some Costco shopping while I was there. Uh, the friends came up um, to take me out for dinner and all that before we went home. And uh, we did our shopping for masks and gloves and whatever. And I managed to get uh, a lot of stuff at Costco. And I don't even know why I'm bringing up Costco. It's somewhere lost in the story. But anyways, the squares are all cut. I'm going to proceed to sew the hems on them. And then I will get back to you and show you the end product.